Welcome to Royal Wood Church, and thank you for joining us online. If this ministry has impacted your life in any way, please share your testimony by sending us an email at media at royalwood.cc. We would love to hear about your experience. Or if you would like to give to the church financially, you can do so online at royalwood.cc by simply clicking on the giving tab. Also, if you would like to be notified when we upload new sermons, subscribe to our YouTube channel or our podcast. Once again, thank you for joining us online. Please open up your heart to receive a word from God today. John, the 11th chapter, verse number 28. I'm not going to read all the scriptures, but I will come back and refer to some of those along the way. John 11, 28. And when she had so said, she went her way and called Mary, her sister, secretly. Now, this is Martha. When Martha had said these things to Jesus, she went her way and called Mary, her sister. Then she said to Mary, the master is come and calleth for thee. We're talking about the great invitation. That's the next four Sundays. So I'm gonna show you here. The master calls, is coming, and then he calls for you. The great invitation. Everybody say, thank you, Lord, for your word. You may be seated. I love the story of Lazarus. And I don't like the part where he dies. But when I was a kid, I remember the part where they, when he came to the part where he said, he stinketh. Oh my goodness. That was always funny. It's one thing to say he stinks. But when he stinketh in the king's English, well, that was even funnier. What a, what a terrible thing this was. You know, Mary, Martha, and Lazarus were like close to Jesus. They were, they were, it wasn't like the Lord came around and said, I'm just gonna play favorites. They were the kind of people that were just more available to the Lord. I mean, that's how you got close to the Lord. You just obeyed him and then you were available to him. If he needed anything, you were right there. It's like that person's going with me in the garden. I'm taking them with me. This is the way Mary, Martha, and, uh, and, and, and Lazarus were. They, were. they were this way. Now, if, if they, would, they would open their house for Jesus to come in and then the people of the town would come in. And, you know, some people didn't like that because those people would run over your wax leaf with gustrums and, and they, would, they would do damage to your variegated pittosporms. I mean, they would, just, they would just tear stuff up. And then if somebody happened to come, like four guys happened to be bringing their buddy on a cot and they were trying to get him into Jesus and there was nowhere to get him in, they'd just take the roof off and that'd mess up, that'd mess up your house. You'd have to call the contractor the next day, which would mean it would be a month or so before he could get there to repair it, but it would still be something that would happen. This is why people didn't like that, but they didn't mind that, Mary, Martha, uh, Mary and Martha and, and Lazarus. And if you'll remember that when, when they were with Lazarus, Mary and Martha, this is where Mary was sitting at the feet of Jesus and Martha was preparing and she got upset with the Lord and with Mary that, uh, she, that, that Mary wasn't in the kitchen helping her out. And uh, the Lord uh, had to set that straight. But I'm gonna give you a little something that happened. This, this man named Lazarus in the town of Bethany, uh, he fell sick. Jesus loved them. He had a special place in his heart for Lazarus, Mary, and Martha. And the Bible said that the word got out, uh, those, Lord, the one that you love is sick. Man, that puts pressure on you. It's not come on and heal somebody. It's thou, the one that thou lovest is sick. And when Jesus heard that, he said, the sickness is not unto death, but that the glory of God may be manifest and that people would be, uh, that people would be convinced. Now, Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. And when he heard, therefore, that he was sick, he abode two days. That don't sound like somebody in a hurry to get to, you, to your friend who was dying. Jesus stayed and delayed two days. And in the meantime, Lazarus dies they bury him, decomposition begins to be set in, and then his disciples come into him and said, the master, uh, the, the Jews, they're, they're coming, they're still wanting you, and he said, we'll go, uh, he's asleep, but we'll go wake him up. And they said, well, Lord, if, if he's asleep, he's probably doing good. Finally, he just had to cut to the chase and said, Lazarus is dead. 
and let's go. And so they go. And when he gets on the outskirts of town, Martha sees him and she runs out there and she meets him. And, 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 and the original wording of this, uh, it, it, it's pretty strong stuff. Lazarus had already been in the grave for several days and uh, uh, nothing, uh, I mean, as far as they knew that it was just, uh, that was the end of the line and, and uh, it, nothing was going to take place and, and it was pretty well over. But when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him and she said in verse 21 uh, to him, if you would have been here, my brother would not have died. That was the whole thing. If you would have been here, we've had the funeral, we've been crying, people have been trying to get to you, you waited too long, but if you would have been here, he would have died. And I want you to listen to what she said. Nevertheless, what I'm gonna tell you what's gonna happen. Even now, whatsoever you ask God, God will give it to you. In other words, he's in the grave, he's been there for several days, he is de decomposing, and she comes out with this audacious faith and says, even now, if you ask something, it can happen. I wonder where that kind of faith is, where your promise is already sealed in a tomb somewhere and locked up. It's rotting, it stinks, it's never gonna happen, but you dare to say, even now, he could do something and change the circumstance. And so she said, even now, he said, well, your brother didn't say he will live again, he said he will rise again. And Martha said, uh, yes, I know, uh, but uh, at the resurrection in the last day. And Jesus said, I'm that. I'm the resurrection and the life. He that believed on me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. You're talking about a day at the end where the, where the resurrection is going to take place. But I'm going to tell you, the resurrection is in sandals standing here before you at this very moment. Some of us like to postpone that thing where, yeah, I believe that's going to happen. But you know what, way out there in the distance. But have you, ever, have you ever noticed this? That there are times when you're looking into the distance, your answer is right before you. And here's the answer to their dilemma. Here's the answer to current resurrection is right here before them. So Martha is pretty upset about it. And she says, yes, I know, Lord, at the resurrection. And Jesus said, I'm that resurrection. And then she says, yes, Lord, I believe that you're the Christ. You're the son of God, which should come into the world. And when she got through saying this, she goes over and finds Mary. And she, here's what she says to Mary secretly. Jesus has come and he's calling for you. We're talking about the great imitation here. He's calling you. He wants you along with what he just said to me and what I just said to him. He is still reaching to you. The master is come and he calls for you. Let me talk to you about the calling. There's people that think that the only calling is calling to the ministry. Like, and when we say the ministry, we always say, think the pulpit ministry, though there are many other ministries besides uh, preaching in the pulpit every week or every day or whatever uh, the circumstance happens. There's all kinds of of ministries, the Bible bears that out. We didn't even have a list of all the ministries that there were, but we had many, many of those mentioned in the scripture. But everybody gets a calling. First of all, God wants to call you out in this room today. And when we say call you out, it's like, well, I don't wanna be called out. You ever been in one of those services where you were hoping they wouldn't call you out? Now, some of you, look, I know what some of you, some of you like those, those services where you get that word, you know. And so you get, you move from behind the woman with the beehive hairdo and you move where they can see you and lock in on you. And then you get that look on your face like I'm over here. And, and, and so you want them to come and, and call you out and, and, and give you a word. I'm kind of worried about people that are always seeking out like getting a word going to call somebody on the phone. You know, uh, I just called that, uh, that preacher because I thought he might could just uh, give me a word. Well, let me talk to you about the word. Because let me tell you this, you know, look, I, I don't even know why somebody had, had this even in the movement that we're in. I don't know why somebody don't have call 1-800-profit you know, uh, or something you know, where you could call in. Of course, you would have to always give your credit card in advance uh, so that you could get the special word. And, and, and so nobody, but, but when I would go to church as a kid, I, last thing I wanted was somebody to call me out. I didn't want anybody to call. And I didn't realize that when I get into the presence of the Lord, he's always calling me out. 
Sometimes he calls you out from the pack. I mean, let me just say this to some of you that want to be leaders. If you're ever going to lead, you can't run with the pack. You got to get out in front of something. We say, well, I'm trying to lead, nobody's following. A, a person that's, that, that's, that's out leading and nobody's following, you're just going for a walk. You're not really a leader. And, and the, way, the way that you got to lead is you got to let the Lord call you out. First Peter 2 verse 9 said that you should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. One of the first things that happens to you, you get called out of darkness. But let me tell you, don't stop. That calling out did not end the day that you came to the altar and received the Holy Ghost, got baptized in Jesus' name, and you said, that's all the calling out I guess he's gonna do. Let me tell you something he's calling you out of. Some of you got relationships going on that he's calling you out of those. Need to put those relationships in the past. 2017, God's calling us out of self-absorption where we're just all worried about ourselves and me and mine and my few little things. God's calling us out of selfishness. God is calling us out of self-centeredness. God's calling us out of woe is me idea. God's calling us out of doubt and unbelief and negativity. Let's come on and answer the call to come out of darkness and let's get in the light. I didn't think this would go over for you today, but I'm just gonna keep going. Y'all gonna miss a lot of beautiful sunshine today if you don't help me out, because I'm, I'm here to preach to you. You gotta get this. Calling you out of unconcern, calling you out of unwillingness to raise your hand to something that can change lives, to make a difference, call you out of that. Well, I, 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 I used to be at a church and they, they didn't put the pressure on me like, like y'all put pressure on me. Well, it's a good thing you got out of there because they were going nowhere. Because you got to somewhere, leave all that behind and say, I got this now. Somebody else has got to have this. I've got to be a blessing to somebody. God didn't give me this to just hoard this and sit back somewhere and say, I got it. And lock the doors of my heart up. I've got to share this with somebody. Somebody needs what we've got. I say this over and over again, but I have to say it unequivocally today. We do have the truth. This is the message. This is the saving message. And since it is the saving message, the lost world has to have it and somebody's gotta be the vehicle to get it to that world. Mm. He's gonna call you out. Then he's gonna, some of you is gonna have to call you back. I'm talking about in Malachi 3, 7, he said, return unto me and I will return unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. But you said, where shall we return? Wherein shall we return? I mean, listen, it, it, it's, a, it, it's not enough to just be called out. See, there's some of you that, you've got relationships, unholy relationships with people that are, are, are a detriment to you in serving the Lord, and, but, but God calls you out of those things, but you know it's wrong, but you don't want it to hurt you sometimes. Well, I got that boyfriend, that girlfriend, and, and I just, you know, if, if I break up, it's gonna hurt me. Let me tell you what hurts more than that. Being unequally yoked for a lifetime, that hurts more. But what has to happen when you know that every day something's tapping, tapping on the conscience of your life and telling you this is not the way to go, this is not the people to be involved in, these are not the things you need to do, that is the calling of God to come out of that. Sometimes you gotta leave them behind. Sometimes you gotta leave the crowd. Sometimes you gotta leave what's popular. And then the Lord begins to call you back. I've heard people say that uh, for, for years, I, I, I'd hear people say, man, you should have seen me the day I got the Holy Ghost. My God, I just tore it up. I, man, I was unbelievable in my younger days. Well, what happened? God's gonna call you back to that. Well, I tell you something, man, I worship. I, I was a worshiper in that day. He's calling you back to that. He's calling you back to the heart of worship where it's all about him. You know, we sing that song all the time. It's all about you. It's all about him. You know, like that. But there, there's people I know, they're, they're, the song, they got that all messed up. It's all about me. It's all about me. 
Every prayer request is about them. Every time they get prayed for, it's about them. I've got needs. I've got this. I've got that. I've got this other thing that needs to be done. I've got family that's lost. I've got children that are lost. And let me tell you what's going to happen and what this thing that Sister Macy was talking about, what these ladies are doing, they're praying for each other's family. Let me just tell you what will move your family forward and to the front of the line. Let me tell you what will move your family to the front of the line. Instead of when you kneel down and you start praying, put your family at the back of the line and put other families in the front of the line and God will look at the back of the line because you have put others in the front of the line and he will answer the prayers that you haven't even prayed. Pastor, I wish I could believe that. I double dog dare you do it. You ever do that to somebody? I double dog dare you to jump off the roof. If you double dog dare, you gotta go. Call you back. Well, there was a time that I believed. There was a time I had this. There was a time I walked with God. Uh, You know, Easter Sunday, I was talking about how the church hurts people. And, you know, the reason the church hurts people is because it's made up of people. So, So please don't blame God for what happens in the church. Even though a lot of times people like to blame that on God. Well, I tell you what, God said. And God wouldn't recognize those words for anything. They're not his words. But but the church does hurt people. The church has hurt people. And I said this on Easter. I've been hurt by the church. Good Lord, I've pastored people that hurt me so bad. It was just unbelievable all these years. You think, I, I've been with you 33 Easter's. I hadn't missed an Easter. Been with you every Easter. Uh, and, and I mean, through that time, I've had people that, that, that said things and did things and conducted themselves the way that, that they they hurt me. There's been times in my life I just thought what a, what a great pastor I'd be if it wasn't for the people. <laughs> but that's what pastors do. But I just thought about that sometimes. You know, how hard it is, what difficulty that there is. And sometimes if you're not careful, it messes up your relationship with God because you look at them as being God's people. God's trying to call you back to where you were. Get an innocence about you. Get a, get, get a softness about you. Put your wall down. Get the veneer down. Get involved in the kingdom of God. Trust again. Listen, I don't care how many people hurt your feelings. I understand. I say I'm sorry. If there's a preacher that's ever hurt you, I apologize for all the mystery in general and collectively. I just say, please, we're sorry. I've hurt people not knowing I would never hurt anybody. I'd rather crawl up a telephone pole and live alone in a crow's nest up there somewhere than to ever hurt anybody. But sometimes you make a decision you didn't know it hurt somebody. I would never want to hurt anybody. But when that happens, you can build up a fence and build up a wall and you don't let anybody in. And God has to call you back to your tenderness and your innocence. I look today at precious people. God is going to give you that call to return. Man, I read my Bible every day, Pastor. I felt like God had something in my life. We'll return to that. Well, I just felt like that, you know, there was a time that I would, I would teach Bible studies and I'd work with people and I'd help new, new disciples return to that. Listen, you think that because you come to the church and there's a good number of people here that there's not a place for you? We're hungry. We're like a hound dog looking for new people that would just get involved. Just We've got so many places to, to put your hands in. I know we've got 225, 250, something like that. Volunteers. But we're going to need 500 volunteers. Yes, we are. Because we're fixing to have it where it's going to be like Easter every Sunday. And when that happens, we need 500 volunteers, Sunday school teachers and workers and greeters and connectors and ushers and all that. We need singers and people that can do all these. Well, but I tell you what, I used to really be able, yes, sir, Brother Macy, I tell you what, there were times I, I'd worship, I could set the tone for the service just by raising my hands and crying out to God, return to that. And then God, and this was in this scripture that I read, he called for her. A lot of times we think the Lord's calling the church, and that's good, but it's individuals that make up the church that he calls to. Proverbs 124 said, because I have called, and then you refused. I've stretched out my hand, and 
no man regarded me. You see, first of all, there's going to be that calling out from the world. Come out from among them and be ye separate. I don't understand what's happening in our world today, but, but uh, when I was growing up, being spirit-filled or Pentecostal or uh, apostolic or any of those things, that was like being just a terrorist. I used to have friends of mine that would, they would get out of their class early, they'd come by junior high, and they'd stand out in the hallway and raise their hands and act like they were having church. Because back then, everybody that went to a spirit-filled church was crazy. That's where we get the term holy roller. You know, people would get out and roll on the floor. At that stage of my life, I'd never even seen a holy roller. Never had. So they'd say, uh, uh, y'all got devils there, y'all got people holy rolling, uh, you got uh, everybody talking in tongues. Hey, hey, would you talk in tongues for us? Years later in my life, I had a buddy of mine right in front of a bunch of people said, uh, don't you, he believes in speaking in tongues. And I said, yeah, I do. And, and, and he said, uh, speak in tongues for him, you know. And uh, that puts you on the spot. Now, if you were in one of the new spirit-filled movements, that wouldn't, that wouldn't phase them at all. They'd just, they'd just put down a Shondo right there. They would, they'd never worry about a thing. They'd just have them a few words. They'd just spit those out right there. Just throw those out there on the floor. I said, hey, what? I, was, I was dumbfounded. I, he's asked me to speak in tongues. I said, you believe in dreams? He said, yeah. I said, well, dream one. Because every now and then you got to have something. I mean, can you just dream one all of a sudden? Can you just get in that spirit? Can you just throw that out there? But there's all kinds of terminology in the world. People are using all this stuff about spirit and Holy Ghost and everybody's spirit filled and everybody, you know, believes the Bible, but there's no fruit in their life of coming out of that. You cannot live there. He's calling you from there. Come out from among them and be you separate, saith the Lord. That means you're going to dress different. You're going to go to different places. You're going to do different things. Your appetite's going to be different. It's a change that takes place. He's calling you out. So he can call you back. And then he calls for you. He begins to call for you. You know, it, 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 it's one of those things where uh, the Lord doesn't just say, well, if anybody can hear me, y'all come. He, he taps you on the shoulder and says, you come to me. Remember, we used the scripture early on at Easter. Come on unto me, all ye that weary and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. So it, it goes from just you come to me, but then it goes back to I will give you. Because people have this idea that you come to God and he takes from you. That's a lie from the father of lies. That's not the truth. Somebody's been lying on God for a long, long time. Don't you get in, don't you get to serving the Lord? He'll just strip you of everything. You'll no longer be happy. Fun is out. My little niece Jody, she was a little bitty and she was in the bathtub bathing and, and, uh, uh, everybody was in there because she was saying things in the bathtub. We had our heads all listening in to what she had to say. And she was standing up and Jamie was sitting uh, there, her little sister, and, and Jody was there and they were both little bitty and Jody was preaching. And here's what she was preaching. No more m ms no more stories. <laughs> Buddy, that's what happens when you come into the church, you know, no more m ms no more stories, no more fun time. Playtime is over. P.E.'s up. It's time to get the long face. I meet Pentecostal people all the time that should be happy people. And I meet them in the mall. I meet them all over the place. Their face so long they can eat popcorn out of a Coke bottle. And, and they live in that morose state of look at all of what I'm doing. I'm all burned out. Hey, we are happy people. We've got the Holy Ghost in fire and it's keeping us alive. We've got something to shout about. We've got something to worship about. Stand with me, would you? He's calling you. Oh. I feel like I could just blow up here today. 
power of God in this room, the anointing of God, the glory of God, the spirit of God. God's not trying to take anything of you. What, what do you think you have that God needs? He owns the cattle of a thousand hills and all the taters underneath them. There's not anything that you can give God. He said, if I were hungry, I wouldn't tell you. You can't give God nothing but yourself. Well, you get in the church and you come unto him and then he will take. He said, no, if you come unto me, I will give you. So all of a sudden, you're happier than you've ever been. Well, I want to be happy. Well, let me tell you what's better than happiness, joy. Happiness will work, you know, according to what's going on in your life. Even as Christians, we are sometimes unhappy. Get out, start the car, the battery dead. You don't just say, oh, thank the Lord. I've never been so happy. No. But that doesn't steal your joy. That sticks with you when everything else is gone. The calling of God to you in this room, you have been, as Mary was called from the master, Martha said, he's calling for you. Oh, that's a good sign. He calls for you. Well, what does he want? Well, go see what he wants. Don't, don't try to get the word before he gives you the word. Well, I don't know what the Lord has for me. I don't know what my, my future holds. Well, link up with the one who's got the future and he'll point you in the right direction. Some of you make your life so complicated by things that's happened in your past and things that people have said in your past. I wish I could I wish I could go back with some of you and erase your memory. I would, I would love to, to get into your hard drive and erase some of your old memories. But some of you, I've tried to do that, but you have them saved to the cloud and right kind of circumstances, there they are, and you just download them right back in, restore them. Or man, you're doing really good, God's done so many awesome things, that stuff is in your past, and all of a sudden it's like, where is system restore? Where you can restore it back to an earlier time and put that back on your laptop. Some of you live your life like that. It's in the past, God forgave it. Son of the blood. Oh, but how can I go back to an earlier time and have it restored back? Well, let me tell you what you can do. All of that that you've wasted, all of that that you've deleted in your life, all of that that's no longer a part of what's going on in your life and you felt like it's all gone, my time is gone, my years are gone, you can hit the restore button and he can go back and pick that up for you and make things different from you at, for you at that very moment. He calls you out, he calls you back, and he calls for you. And when that happens, it changes everything. All of you that work for God here, you're in all the different ministries, you make all this stuff, wonderful stuff happen. That beautiful song that, one of the beautiful songs that the choir sang last week, they posted that and Thousands of people viewed it and shares and, and it was just awesome. And, and, and it, was like, it was like somebody had done a professional recording. I, I, was, I just brought, it brought tears to my eyes. But that didn't happen accidentally. That happened by incredible work. But I urge you never forget as you work for God that you neglect the God of the work. It's okay to work for God, but don't forget the God of the work. We've got to have a relationship with Him. We've got to love Him. We've got to live for Him. We've got to let Him call us up close to Him. Listen, in this crazy world, stuff going on around us so quickly. What's North Korea going to do? And, and, and Well, whatever it is, it's going to be irrational. But don't, uh, what do I need to do? What about the economy? What's China and, and what's going to happen and my kids and they're going to school and what am I going to do about this? And our minds are so twisted and torn until we can't even hear what the Lord says. 
you've got to stop sometimes and get on the frequency of heaven where you can hear what the Lord has to say. I have for so long had XM radio in my car that wherever I go, I can listen to my favorite stations. And the other day, somehow, I got on that, I can't remember if it was AM or FM, I think it was AM, I was listening to 740, maybe Rush Limbaugh or something. And I was driving somewhere and it kept getting, it was fading and fading and fading and I kept trying to fix it and I was turning it. Finally, I just lost it. Some other station came on, it was something, uh, somebody else talking, it just overwhelmed it. And I realized that when I have my satellite radio, it can find me anywhere. But I've gotta be in close proximity of the signal. If I'm gonna go AM or FM, I gotta be close by where that's being broadcast. See, God's got that frequency for you that you can go anywhere and he can still get the message to you. Some of you have veered outside of the zone and you don't hear it as well. And we're gonna end this today with being around the front and I'm not gonna make you stand, I'm not gonna preach. Once you get up here, I, my message is over. I'm not gonna preach another message. We always have next steps open and what we believe in our church is you don't take the next step, there's next steps to take. Well, I've been in church all my life, I don't really think there's anything else. I'm sorry, you're really not on the landing. You're not at the very top of it yet. There are other steps. Get connected with people. Come on, this is not a one-man show. You gotta get connected with people. Well, I don't really, I don't guess I really need people. Well, let me give you a thought here. What about somebody needing you for a change? Well, I don't have to go to anything because I, I really, I, I'm pretty good by myself, that's good. But there are other people that are not, and so they need yourself there in order so they'll have somebody with them. Nothing wrong with that. That's your next step. You can do that in a minute. Ministry team is gonna be up here. They're gonna be ready to pray for you. If you've got something you need, do I have to go there to pray? No, no, we're gonna come around. But if you just like, well, I just need somebody. I don't understand it. I don't know what to do. I, I wanna get the Holy Ghost, but I don't even know what the Holy Ghost is. We baptized people last week. Several people received the Holy Ghost over the Easter weekend, but these couples that stand here, they're ready to pray for you. But here's what I'd like to do in ending this service. The reason I'm gonna call you forward is because sometimes you've gotta step out. I'm not asking you to come down and spend an hour up here. I'm just asking you that when you take those 25 steps coming up to the front, you say unto the Lord, I want to be able to respond when you call me out. God, you're calling me and I'm coming to you today. Would you do that with me? Just, just come on down here. Get as close as you can. They're going to sing about